السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How are you guys? Are you fine? I'm Jan Ahmed Abdel Sadiq and today's model is maths. Now the first question in this model is say which of the following statement is true about the set of numbers denoted by n, w and z. That means natural number, whole number and integer numbers. Now here what we have whole number is the subset of natural numbers. Whole number is the subset of integer positive number and uh, integer numbers are is a subset of whole numbers and natural number is a subset of positive integer numbers now here we know the rule which is natural number is subset to whole number which is subset to okay wait because here natural number is subset to whole number then is subset to integer number then is subset to rational number now what we have here whole is the subset of natural number no natural number is a subset of whole number so a is not the correct answer here what we have whole number is a subset of positive integers no it says positive integers and positive integers whole it will be by integer which is uh, negative 1, negative 2 and like so on so it's not correct C which is and also B is not to include 0 because it says positive and here what we have that is the subset of whole number no here whole number is a subset of integer numbers now here what we have natural number is a subset of integers positive integers yes here natural number is a subset of integers and also positive integers so D is the correct answer now in question number 2 it says the simplified form of the expression 2x squared plus 5x minus 2 the bracket of 3x minus 4x squared is what? ok now let's make it together here What we will do, we write the equation, which is 2x squared plus 5x minus 2 times 3x minus 4x squared right then what we will do here we'll make 2x squared 2x squared plus 5x minus 2 times 3x it will be 6x and two negative two times negative four x squared it will be positive eight x squared. Then when we collect like terms together, it will be two x squared two x squared plus eight x squared. 8x squared here plus 5 negative 6x that means negative x then 2x squared plus 8x squared it will be 10x squared minus x so that means choice a is the correct answer which is 10x squared minus x ok now in question number 3 it says a number is added to 10 the result is multiplied by 6 and gave the product 108 what was the original number ok let's do it together here
here what we have a number is added to 10 that means x plus 10 the result is multiplied by 6 that means both of them are multiplied by 6 okay then we will give us the product of 108 okay then what we will do we will make divide both sides by 6 to cut 6 so we will cut 6 by 6 then what we have 108 over 6 that means 6 here by 1 and here by 18 then what we will have x plus 10 is equal to 18 right then x is equal to when you shift 10 to 18 it will be negative 10 that means 10 I mean 18 minus 10 which will give us x is equal to 8 so that means 8 was the original number so that means choice B which has the number 8 is the correct answer for question number 3 now let's go for question number 4 In question number four says what what is the value of two x squared plus six y squared over x plus y when evaluated at x is equal to negative one and y is equal to three. So that means here in place of x squared what we will put negative one right? Negative one over I mean negative one squared plus six in place of y we'll put three which is three squared then over what we have here x plus y that means negative 1 plus 3 then what we will have here 2 times 1 because negative 1 times negative 1 it will be positive 1 right plus 6 times 9 because 3 times 3 is equal to 9 over 2 right then we'll make 2 because 2 times 1 is equal to 2 plus 6 times 9 which is 54 over 2 that means is equal to 56 over 2 then divide by 2 here by 1 and here by 28 so that means the answer that we get here 28 is in choice C so that means choice C is the correct answer for question number 4 28 okay now let's go for the fifth question In question number 5 it says the solution set of the equation 3 times x minus 2 over 5 is equal to x minus 2 over 5 here what we will do first of all we'll make 5 or before writing 5 let's write the equation here itself 3 in bracket x minus 2 over 5 right 
minus x minus I mean is equal to x minus 2 over 5 then we want to like take out 5 so that means we multiply both sides by 5 So that means we will cut 5 here by this 5, then we will cut this 5 by this 5, and 5 times x is equal to 5x. So that means we will have 3x minus 2 is equal to 5x minus 2. Then what we will make here, 3 times x is equal to 3x. 3 times 2 is equal to negative 6 is equal to 5x negative 2 then we will make 3x here then we will shift 5 to 3x so that means negative 5x is equal to negative 2 plus 6 because when we will shift negative 6 to the other side it will be positive 6 now here what we have negative 2x is equal to negative 2 plus 6 it will be 4 then divide both sides by negative 2 then here by 1 and here by 2 then x is equal to negative 2 this is the last answer for question number five that means negative two is a solution set and is in choice d which means choice d is the correct answer for question number five now in question number six let's go for question number six it says the perimeter of a rectangle filled is 728 okay if the length of the field exists its weight by eight meters then what is the length of the field okay now what we will do here we have perimeter which is equal to what 728 and we have length which is equal to weight plus 8 and we have the formula of perimeter which is p is equal to p is equal to what 2 times length plus weight right but in place of length we will put weight plus 8 so that means it will be perimeter which is 728 728 is equal to 2 times length plus weight then divide both sides by 2 then cut 2 by 2 you will have what length plus tabular weight length plus weight is equal to 364 why make 364 because I divide the 728 by 2 by 1 and here by 364 then what we'll make here already we have length which is weight plus 8 plus 8 is equal to 364 then weight is equal to 364 minus 16 because 8 plus 8 is equal to 16 then the last answer it will be 178 okay which means in choice C now question number 
7. In question number 7, it says what is the solution set of the inequality negative 6x uh, minus 4 times x plus four, 5 less than negative 8 x minus 24. Okay, now let's do it together. Here what we will do. Negative 6x, negative 4, times x, plus 5, less than, negative 8x, minus 24 okay here what we will do we'll make negative 6 we'll make negative 4 times x times positive 5 so that means we will get negative 6x negative 4x negative 20 less than negative 8x minus 24 now what we will do here we will collect the like terms together that means uh, negative 6x and negative 4x it will be negative 10x and here what we have negative 20 negative 8x negative 24 then we will make shift like negative 10x positive 8x right less than negative 24 plus 20 so that means negative 10 and positive 8 it will be negative 2x is less than negative 4 right because negative 24 plus 20 will give us negative 4 divide both sides by negative 2 cut negative by negative and by 1 and like 2 by 1 and here 2 by 2 then we will change the sign because we divide both sides by negative so that means it will be x greater than 2 so that means choice B is the correct answer for question number 7, which is x greater than 2. Okay, now let's go for question number 8. It says, which of the following fraction is equivalent to 12 1 over 2 percent? That means 2 times 12 is 24. 24 plus 1 is equal to 25. That means 25 over 2 times 1 over 100 because it's the percent. Now what we will make here, divide like 25 and 100 here by 1. I mean here by 5 and here by 20. Then by 5, 1 and by 24. Then is equal to what? 1 times 1, 1, 2 times 4, 8. That means 1 over 8 is the answer. That means it's in choice C. Choice C is equal to 1 over 8. So that means the answer for question number 8 is C, choice C. Now question number 9, what percent of pair 420 is pair 105? It will be 25 percent, right? So the answer for question number 9, is 25 percent why I will show you now here now what we will do here we have 420 pair and is pair 105 right 
what percent of pair 420 is pair 105 now what we will do first here we know that percent b is equal to b times r right that means 105 is equal to 420 times r over 100 then cut 0 by 0 and then what we have here we we'll make 105 105 times 10 over 42 is equal to r then what we we'll make here we will divide it first of all 105 times 10 is equal to 1050 then over 42 when we we'll divide it is equal to 25% so that means in choice D which is 25% is the answer for question number 9 ok now in question number 10 let's go in question number 10 It says that Otto a snake poured bear 2000 for uh, 6 months at a simple interest rate of 18% per annum. What is the total amount that must be repaid, repaid at the end of the 6 months? Now what we will do here, first of all we have the interest is equal to P R T. Then I, we have the percent which is here what will make two thousand times what we have in rent eighteen over hundred the year we have six months that means half of year that means 1 over 2 ok now cut here by 1 here by 9 then cut 2 zeros by 2 zeros then 20 times 9 i is equal to 20 times 9 will be 180 right then the amount is equal to i plus p right i plus p so that means is equal to 180 plus 2000 that means the final answer it will be 2180 this is the final answer that means choice A is the correct answer for question number 10. Okay, now let's go for question number 11. Question number 11 says the following pie chart shows favorite chewing gum of 40 students in a certain school. How many students of the school choose cafe? Okay, now what we'll do here, first of all, we'll make here, uh, we have 45 degree, 145. 4 degree 108 degree and coffee we don't know its degree so that means all of them will be plus is equal to 360 then we'll find the degree for coffee which it will be 63 degree right we'll find 63 degree okay then 63 degree is equal to P over B times 360 then 63 degree is equal to B over 40 times 360 cut 0 by 0 cut here by 1 and here by 9 so that means 
63 degree is equal to 9p right then divide both sides by 9 to find p here by 1 and here by 7 so p is equal to 7 which is in choice B. That means choice B is the correct answer for question number 11. Now let's go for question number In question number 12, it says what? ABC company has a monthly net income of per 20,000. If the company spent 3,000 per for community development, 2,000 per for, in, uh, for insurance, and the rest for saving in the company's account, then how many percent of the income spent on saving? Okay, first of all, what we will find here, what we will write, will make the cost price which is cost price plus plus sold plus saving is equal to twenty thousand. Then what we'll make here, we'll make 3,000 plus 2,000 plus S, which means saving, is equal to 20,000, right? Then 3,000 plus 2,000, it will be 15. No, like first of all, when you make added, when you will add 3000 and 2000, then divide both sides by the number, you will get 15s is equal to 15,000. Okay, then what we'll make here? P is equal to BR. That means. 15,000 is equal to 20,000 times R over 100. That means cut 20 by 20. Then you will get 1,000, I mean 15,000 is equal to 200R then divide both sides by 200 cut 0 by 0 then we have 150 over 2 here by 2 1 and 150 it will be 75 so that means R is equal to 75 percent that means in choice C, 75%. Okay, now let's go for question number uh, 13. Question number 13 says the mean of four numbers is 15 and the mean of six other numbers is 20. What is the mean of all 10 numbers? Okay, what we'll make here, first of all, we have x over 4 
is equal to 15 okay then crisscross when you are crisscross x is equal to 60 right then about y y over 6 is equal to 20 when you will crisscross it will be y is equal to 120 right then what we have here it says what is the mean of all 10 numbers so that means 10 x plus y is equal to 180 divide both sides by 10 okay then what we will have we will have 18 why 180 because 20 plus 60 is equal to 100 80 right 120 I mean 120 plus 60 is equal to 180 so that means 10 in place of x plus y is equal to 120 is equal to what 18 so that means the correct answer for question number um, 13 it will be 18 which is in choice D okay now let's go for question number 14 question number 14 it says which of the following statement is true about a, paral a parallelogram? The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. The consecutive sides of a parallelogram are congruent. The opposite sides of a parallelogram may not be congruent or all of the above. The answer it will be the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Okay. Now question number 15 is the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon is 135 degree then how many sides does the polygon have okay what we have here the formula is already n minus 2 times 180 is equal to 135 right here over n then crisscross you will get 180 n minus 360 is equal to 135 n then what we will do here 180 n minus 135 n because we will shift it so it will be 45 n right 45 n is equal to 360 then divide both sides by 45 Then you will get what here by one and here by eight. So that means n is equal to eight. In choice B is the correct answer. Okay, now let's go for question number sixteen. Question number sixteen actually it's have a problem itself, so skip it. Now in question number 17, what is the area of a circle whose, whose circumference is 12 pi centimeter? Now what it will make here, A is equal to pi times R squared, C is equal to times pi times R squared. Then what we will make here? 12 pi is equal to 2 pi r squared over 2 pi over 2 pi because we need to find r.
now we've got 2 pi with 2 pi and pi with pi is in 2 and here by 12 which it will be uh, 6 then 6 over a is equal to r right then a is equal to pi times in place of r what will make 6 over a squared so that means a is equal to 36 centimeter cube which is in choice D. So is this the correct answer for question number 17? Okay, now in question number 19, it says the rational number m is called a perfect square if and only if for some n is element of rational number plus the rational number, m is equal to what? It will be radical, radical n. This was question number 19, but question number 18, let's solve it together. Now in question number 18 it says the lateral surface area of a right circle cylinder is 288 pi centimeter uh, square and the diameter of the base is 16 centimeter square. What is the altitude of the cylinder? So now let's write together here what we have AS is equal to P, B is the perimeter of base times high right then what will make here 288 288 pi is equal to pi 16 times high then what will make here over pi 16 over pi 16 because we need to find high pi 16 and here pi 16 then cut pi with pi then here 288 divided by 16 or we can say high is equal to 288 divided by 16 that means high is equal to what 18 centimeters so that means the correct answer for question number 18 is in choice A, which is 18 centimeters. Okay, now let's go for question number 20. Question number 20 says the simplified form of the expression 3 radical 98 minus 4 radical 72 plus radical 32. Okay, here what we will do here. 3... In radical 9 times 2 because 98 minus 4 times what 36 times 2 plus 4 radical 2 okay then what we will do here 9 radical 2 minus 24 radical 2 plus 4 radical 2 then all of them have radical 2 right so that means we'll make radical 2 outside of the bracket times 9 minus 24 plus 4 that means the final answer will be negative 3 radical 2 so this is the final answer for question number 20 that means choice B is the correct answer negative 3 radical 2 
Okay, now let's go for question number 21. It says, which of the following statement is true about the cube roots? Like, by saying only, choice D is the correct one. Why? Because it says 0 0.001 is equal to 0 0.1, right? The, um, the cube root, because 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 will give us 0 0.001. So that means this one is the correct one. So choice D is the correct one. Now in question number 22 it says what? The following example shows adding and subtracting of algebraic expressions. Example 2 times 2x minus 3y minus 4y plus 2x minus 5x. Now here it says hence step 2 indicates what? Collecting like terms, removing brackets, simplifying or multiplying. Of course it will be collecting like terms. Okay, in question number 23, which one of the following expression is the highest common factor, HCF, of the terms 14a cubed b squared, 21a times b cubed, and 35a squared b squared? So here it will be by 7 and here 2. And here what we have by 7 and 3. And here by 7 and 5. So that means the common factor is 7. And here we So that means it will be choice B. 7 times A times B squared. Now in question number 24 it says if X is equal to 1 and Y is equal to 2. Then what is the value of 4Y times 3X minus Y plus 5 times 3X minus Y. Okay now let's write it together here. 4Y. 4y times 3x minus y plus 5 times 3x minus y. Then 4y minus 3x it will be before this one what we have here in place of y it will be 2. And the place of 1, it will be x. So that means 4 times 2. 4 times 2. And here in bracket 3 times 1 minus 2 plus 5 times 3 times 1 minus 2. Right? Then the final answer, it will be. 8 in bracket 3 minus 2 plus 5 in bracket 3 minus 2 okay then cut 3 minus 2 is 3 minus 2 then what we have here 8 plus 5 8 plus 5 is equal to 13 so that means the answer for question number 24 is choice C okay now in question number 25 in question number 25, it says a father is 27 years old, uh, older than his son. 10 years ago, he was twice as old as his son. How old is the father now? Okay, first of all, let's, uh, let's be the father F. F is equal to S plus 27. Then F minus 10 is equal to 2 times 5 minus 10 then here what we have s plus 27 minus 10 is equal to 2 times 5 that means 25 minus 10 now what we'll make here it will be 7 plus 17 is equal to 25 minus 20 yes here it will be 20 not 10 okay now what will make here 17 plus 20 is equal to s so that means s is equal to 37 right okay then what will make f is equal to 37 plus 
27 which it will be f is equal to 64 that means choice D is the correct one for question number 25 now let's go for question number 26 it says which of the following linear inequality is equivalent to negative 3x plus 8 less than negative 2x plus 10 okay I think no need to like write it because already you know how to write it first of all we will collect the right terms together that means negative 3x plus 2x because we will shift it then we will shift 8 to 10 that means it will be negative, uh, negative 8 and positive 10 then what will make here negative 3 and positive 2 that means we will have negative x right we will have negative x then uh, less than what we have here positive 10 negative 8 that means it will be 2 then multiply both sides by negative negative but so the answer it will be C the correct answer it will be C you will uh, when you will solve it the last answer you will get it will be 5x here it should be uh, less than not greater than okay this is a mistake 5x less than 2 so this this is uh, it will be the right answer okay now let's go for question number 27 question number 27 right question number 7 uh, 27 says what is the solution set of the inequality 6 times 2 plus 4x uh, less than or equal to 42 in the state of positive integers first of all what we'll make here 6 times 2 is equal to 12 6 uh, times 4x is equal to positive 24x less than or uh, equal to 42 then shift 12 with 42 that means it will be 24x less than or equal to 42 minus 12 so that means it will be 24 x less than or equal to 30 then divide both sides by 24 ok then the last answer it will be here 10 over 8 10 over 8 so that means x is less than or equal to 1.25 why we didn't change the sign because it was divided by a positive number not a negative number so that means the sign it will be as it is then the solution said it will be 1 okay now in question number 28 it says what is the equation of a line that pass through two points p which is negative 1 and 3 and q which is 1 and 5 ok let's solve it together now what we will do here what is the equation of a line that passed through two points first of all we have the formula which is m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 then what we will do here 5 minus 3 over 1 minus negative 1 which is equal to 2 over 2 that means is equal to 1 ok now y is equal to m x plus b that means y is equal to x plus b that means f i mean 5 is equal to 1 plus b 
then b is equal to 5 minus 1 that means it will be 4 so that means y is equal to x plus 4 so the last answer here it will be here what we have negative x plus y is equal to 4 cut negative and this is the answer okay now in question number 29 it says which of the following families of solid figures are similar of course it will be cubes okay in question number 30 in the figure given below dc the arc of dc c a b a c a and c o and a are on the same line if angle dc o is the same or similar to uh, angle b a o then which of the following similarity theorems supports the answer of course it will be angle angle theorem right if you can see here angle and here angle so that means angle angle theorem okay in question number 31 the ratio of the size of two similar polygons is 2 ratio 3. If the area of the larger polygon is 45 cm cube, I mean squared, then what is the area of the smaller polygon? Now, what we'll do here, it will be A1 over A2 is equal to S1 over S2 squared. Okay, so that means A1 over A2 is equal to 3 over 2 because it's a ratio, then it will be squared. That means in place of area 1, we will have 45, 45 over area 2 is equal to 9 over 4 right then crisscross when you crisscross what it will be here 4 times 45 is equal to n i mean 9 times area 2 that means area 2 will be is equal to what 20 centimeter square so that means the correct answer for question number 31 is choice b which is 20 centimeter square okay in question number 32 it says which of the following statements is true about tangent and second lines to a spherical? It will be a second. A second of a spherical contains chord of the spherical. This one is the correct and is the true about tangent and second lines. Okay, now in question number 33, it says in the figure below, O is the center of the spherical. Which of the following statement is not true? Which of the following is not true? Here what we have measurement uh, of angle CAD is equal to measurement of CBD yes the arc of BCD is a semicircle yes the angle of ADC is right angle yes the angle of BDA is an obtuse angle no so that means D is the answer for question number 33 now let's go for question number 34 it says in the figure below the arc of PQ is a chord and O is the center of the circle if measure of angle PBQ is equal to 65 degree then what is the size of major QPO here what we have 65 degree right then here it will be 130 degree that means X plus X plus 130 is equal to 180 why because here it will be 130 here what we have x and we have here x so that means x plus x plus 130 is equal to 180 then 2x is equal to 180 minus 130 then we will find 2x is equal to 50 then divide both sides by 2 that means here by 1 and here by 25 so that means x is equal to 25 degree for question number 34 the answer is choice a which is 
25 degree okay now let's go for question number 35 it says which of the following probability can be best describes an impossible of course it will be zero because zero means is impossible okay in question number 36 it says a pair of fair dice is thrown what is the probability that the sum of the scores on the upper phase is five here what we will have four and one one and four one and five three and two so that means one two three four that means we will make four over thirty six then here by one and here by nine that means one over nine the answer is choice C one over nine okay now let's go for question number seven in the figure below the angle of ABC is a right angle triangle with the arc of CD the altitude on the hypotenuse if arc CD and arc AB then which of the following is not true here to write the formulas all of the formulas what we have here AC squared is equal to AD times AB right then BC squared is equal to BD times BA then DC squared is equal to AD times DB okay now here BC squared is equal to AB times BD yes it's correct okay CD squared is equal to BD times AD CD yes it's correct AC squared is equal to AB times DA yes it's correct then most left is AB squared is equal to AC times BC no it's not correct so that means choice D is the answer for question number 37 now in question number 38 what we'll do here it will be in the figure below the angle of ABC is right angle at C if the arc of BC is 6 cm and the arc of AB is 10 cm then which of the following is true ok now let's use the formula which is A squared plus B squared is equal to c squared right then a b squared that means a squared plus 6 squared in place of b is equal to 10 squared so that means a squared plus 36 is equal to 100 then we will subtract both of them because we will shift 36 to 100 it will be a squared is equal to radical 64 and here also radical so we'll cut 2 by radical then radical 64 which is going to be 8 a it will be 8 that means here okay now the correct one which is true it will be a is equal to 3 over 5 sen a which is here sin A the sin that means opposite over hypotenuse opposite which is 6 cm over hypotenuse which is 10 cm then 6 over 10 6 over 10 by 2 it will be 3 and by 2 here it will be by 5 so 3 over 5 is the correct answer that means choice A is the correct one now let's go for question number 39 it says a letter of length 12 rest okay now what we'll do here we'll make the graph itself this is the letter and here what we have 60 degree okay and here we have 12 then cos 60 is equal to x over 12 okay then 1 over 2 
because cos 60 means 1 over 2 is equal to x over 12 then when you crisscross the final answer it will be x is equal to uh, 6 that means 6 radical 3 that means the correct answer for question number 39 is choice D ok now question number 40 the figure below is regular square pyramid which of the following is not true about the pyramid it says the lateral edges are all equal in length the pyramid must be right pyramid the lateral faces are equatorial triangles the foot of the altitude must be at the center of the base no the last one is not correct it not should be or not must be in the middle or in the center and uh, center of the base that means choice D is not true about the pyramids. Now this was the last answer for the last question in this model. I hope that you benefit from the answers that we solve it together here. And inshallah in the coming videos we are going to explain more uh, models in uh, the next coming videos. So thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Goodbye.